Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about eddy currents and some of the applications of eddy currents. The first section will be dedicated to figuring out exactly what eddy currents are and how they arise. And the rest will be different applications of using these eddy currents for useful tasks. So to begin with, we need to learn what eddy currents are. Uh, as you might have suspected, the eddy in, a, in eddy currents is not a name, but in fact uh, something inspired by fluids. When a current of a fluid passes by another current, they can create little whirlpools or eddies. And this is what eddy currents are named after. All right, so let's go back to Lenz's law for a moment. We know that we can use Lenz's law to predict the direction of current that flows in a loop of wire, right? Or in this case, a coil of wire. That's all well and good. But what happens if we don't have a coil of wire? What happens if we have a differently shaped conductor, like a flat sheet or a box or something like that made of metal? Well, the induced current will still be circular. It'll still be clockwise or anticlockwise, depending on whether the magnet is moving away or forward. But it won't be confined to just one single circle. Moving a magnet toward a flat sheet of metal will induce a current all through that sheet of metal. Once again, it'll create an opposing magnetic field. So we can see that each one of these little uh, eddy currents will produce a south pole facing the magnet, which means that this magnet must be approaching the sheet of metal. So the induced current will flow in circles within the sheet of metal, or within the block of metal if we use something more thick. So that means that by moving a magnet we can get uh, hundreds of these little tiny currents flowing in a clockwise direction. And they don't all have to be concentric either. So these little electric currents can be thought of as sort of whirlpools or eddies or vortices, just existing uh, right at the top of the sheet of the metal. So that's why we call them, of course, eddy currents. So the little sort of whirlpools or vortices of current that uh, appear in a piece of metal when a magnet flows, uh, when a magnet moves near them, are called eddy currents. So eddy currents can also be produced in three-dimensional chunks of metal, of course, uh, or any other conductor, whether that's uh, salt dissolved in water, or a plasma, or something like that. So eddy currents induced in a are induced in a piece of metal when it moves through a magnetic field. For instance, when this block of metal starts falling into one. They also appear when the magnetic field itself changes, as you might expect. In both cases, eddy currents always oppose the change in magnetic flux through the conductor. So in this case, the uh, growing amounts of magnetic flux inside the conductor will produce uh, eddy currents that oppose that flux by creating flux in the other direction. See that? We can see that these eddy currents aren't just in one location on the conductor either. We have several that we can see from the front, and over the outside of the metal we see a larger eddy current going all around it. Now if the magnetic field near a conductor is increasing, for example if we have a magnet moving closer to it, then the eddy currents will flow so that they induce a field opposed to it, so that they create a north pole that repels the magnet, right? That's Lenz's law. We've done it before. If the magnetic field near a conductor is decreasing, like over here, the eddy currents will flow once again to minimize the loss. So uh, if they lose magnetic field lines pointing this way, they'll create their own by producing the circular current that we can see in the diagram. And it doesn't have to be the magnet moving. It can be the conductor moving as well. If the conductor moves into a magnetic field, the eddy currents will uh, produce a magnetic field that opposes 
the conductor's motion. Similarly, if the conductor is moving away, the eddy currents will work to form a magnetic field that stops it from moving, as we can see in this bottom diagram over here. Uh, as the conductor moves away, it wants to attract itself back to the magnet, so it induces a south pole over here and produces the eddy currents which we can see in the diagram. Now eddy currents don't last a particularly long time. Why might this be? Well, when the magnetic field stops changing, the currents will quickly disappear. In an ideal uh, conductor that has no resistance, they might just keep on sp spinning in a little circle forever, never losing energy. But in reality, all conductors have resistance. And this means that the metal will act as a resistor and transform the electrical energy in the conductor into heat energy in the conductor and the whole thing will heat up. It turns out that one of the applications of eddy currents is to use this to heat up saucepans and so on, which we can see in this photograph. So now that we know what eddy currents are, we'll be doing some more sections on how we can use them uh, to do useful work. For now though, that's the end of the theory, so we can go on to some questions. Question 1. Where do eddy currents get their name? Are they like little eddies of electricity? Were they named after Eddie Foucault? Do they cause metal to move in eddy patterns? Or is it none of the above? Well, let's go through the options. I'll tell you right away, it's not D, none of the above. Now, the force produced by an eddy current might oppose the conductor's motion if the conductor is what's moving, but they will not cause the conductor to move around in little spirals. Uh, eddy currents were not named after Eddie Foucault, but they were discovered by Leon Foucault. So our final option, if it's not D, is going to be A. They're like little eddies of electricity, and this is the correct answer. Remember that an eddy is like a little whirlpool that's produced when uh, two parts of a fluid meet each other. Question 2. A magnet moves near a sheet of metal. Remembering the equation relating EMF to flux, how could the strength of the eddy currents be increased? So what equation relates EMF to flux? That's right. EMF equals the change in flux over the change in time. Right? So given that, how could we decrease the strength of eddy currents? Could we increase the strength of the magnet, decrease the speed of the magnet, use a metal with higher conductivity, or use a thicker metal? Well, using C or D, a higher conductivity metal or a thicker metal, will reduce the resistance of the metal, which can only make the eddy currents stronger. If we increase the strength of the magnet, then the amount of flux changing over time will be greater. And this means that we'll get a greater voltage and a greater amount of eddy currents. But if we decrease the speed of the magnet, that means the change in time is larger. A larger change in time means a smaller voltage, and a smaller voltage means smaller eddy currents. So a thicker metal will allow more eddy currents to form. A higher conductivity metal will allow more eddy currents to form. Increasing the strength of the magnet will increase the amount of eddy currents, but decreasing the speed of the magnet will decrease the strength of the eddy currents. So B is the correct answer. Question 3. Predict the direction of the eddy currents when a block of metal moves away from you toward the north pole of the magnet. So let's think about this. We have a block over here and a magnet over here and the block moves towards the north pole of the magnet, right? That means that by the right-hand rule, it will want to oppose the north pole and create lines of magnetic flux going this way, opposing the north pole's lines of magnetic flux going that way. So right-hand rule says magnetic flux this way are caused by electric currents going in this direction, right? That looks like clockwise to me. 
So the block resists its motion by inducing a north pole towards the magnet. By the right-hand rule, current flows clockwise. Part B, a block of metal moves towards you, away from the south pole of a magnet. So now, once again, the uh, block of metal is in front of the magnet, but this time it's the south pole of the magnet. Now, when the metal block moves away from the magnet, it wants to resist that change. So it induces a north pole next to the south pole of the magnet, which is over here. By the right-hand rule, once again, we have a clockwise current. So it will resist the motion by inducing flux pointing towards the magnet, and we'll get a clockwise current flowing through the block of metal, or rather several clockwise currents that we call eddy currents. Question 4. Like friction, eddy currents are able to transform mechanical energy into heat. Explain how this transformation occurs. All right, well, let's think about what energy transformations happen when we create eddy currents. Lenz's law is a way of turning kinetic energy into electrical energy, so let's start with that. When a magnet moves near a conductor, or a conductor moves near a magnet, current flows within the conductor producing a magnetic field that opposes its motion, right? So that transforms kinetic energy into electrical energy. But now we need to get mechanical energy into heat. So how do we do that? Well, it's easy. All we need is the resistance of the conductor. In large two or three dimensional conductor, many small eddy currents are reduced, but they are quickly dissipated into heat because, of course, the metal has resistance. So this means that eddy currents have turned kinetic energy into electrical energy and electrical energy into heat energy. So the total transformation is simply kinetic energy into heat energy, same as friction. Question 5. When a magnet is dropped through a metal tube, it slows down, even if the metal is not magnetic. Explain why. This is a very fun little experiment to do, by the way. So what will happen when the magnet is falling through the metal tube? Well, the sides of the metal tube will experience a changing magnetic field, right? So if we have a changing magnetic field, that means that a current will flow in circles around the tube, eddy currents, if you like. And these currents will produce a magnetic field that resists the motion of the magnet. Can you see where we're going now? So as the magnet falls, the sides of the metal tube experience a change in magnetic field and form eddy currents. So the magnetic field induced by the eddy currents will slow down the magnet as it falls through the tube. So that's the end of the questions. In this section we've learned about eddy currents. These are small currents induced in large pieces of metal when a magnetic field moves near them. In the next section, and the following sections beyond that, we'll be learning about some of the applications of these eddy currents.